Hello there, you amazing viewers and subscribers, and let me say, Lieutenant, well, Commander B P Paul Bailey here reporting to you. So, what? Well, welcome to this uh, anniversary video of Star Trek. So, happy anniversary to 55 years of Star Trek. Yes, 55 years of humans exploring space, battled against Klingons, Romulan, Borg, Cardassians, the Dominion, Jem'Hadar, the Erosion, you know, so many great episodes, so I thought... For this video, why not take talk about some of my favourite episodes out and some of the films as well, like my favourite scenes at each Star Trek series and stuff. So sit there with your communicators on standby while I before I will go into Red Alert and talk about the fifty-five years of Star Trek awesomeness. So. My favourite Star Trek show, as you can tell, is The Next Generation, since I'm wearing the Next Generation uniform. Again, I am absolutely thrilled to be wearing this uniform because it shows my love for Star Trek The Next Generation. Because I love The Next Generation, even though it does appear in Deep Space Nine, the Star Uniform. So, if you want to get confused, this actual uniform was actually used from The Next Generation Season 3 down to Deep Space Nine Season 4. It's the last time you see something like this being worn. So basically, it was worn from 2366 to 2372, 72, 73, just before the new style uniforms come out. Because that ran out at some points of the next generation. We had a few different style of uniforms. We have one with the piping around the black. Um, we end up having the overall ones. So where you got like the color here and then the rest are all black for... I think it was for like station operations, like on DS9, where most people in the next generation end up wearing this um style until roundabout generations where they start wearing the bit of Deep Space Nines as well as this one. So that's a bit of uh, information about this uniform I've been wearing. So talking about my favourite stuff from Star Trek's fifty five years, and I have to say. It's been a pretty good long run for Star Trek. It has been absolutely amazing with nine TV shows coming on to the 10th round about next year with Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds. Also, we have Star Trek Picard Season 2 and Discovery Season 4. And we are in the middle of watching Lower Deck Season 2. There will be a video coming out at the end of Lower Deck Season 2 because we are on Episode 5 this week. So, I believe it's 10 episodes like the first season. So, in the next couple of weeks, there will be a review coming out on Star Trek Discovery not Discovery, so it's Star Trek Lower Decks, Season 1 and 2, because I will be, before I do the actual whole review, I'm going to be watching the two seasons back to back, and then do a whole review on it, and at the moment, I am loving, I am actually loving uh, Lower Lower Decks, it's actually a good comedy Star Trek show, being actually made by the creators of Rick and Morty, I have to say, you all have done absolutely brilliant jobs in Lower Decks, I, I love the old references and stuff, so, Talking about my favourite things out of the Star Trek franchise from 50 years. Now, to talk about this, I'm going to be talking about a few battles. Um, some of the characters I absolutely enjoy from each Star Trek series. So, for me, I'm going to talk about the original series and the animated series straight away. Because these two are, in a way, connected. Because animated is basically the last year of the Enterprise's five-year mission. Where you've got the original series with one to three with the, doing the five-year mission. So, roundabout is still, like... That point. So my favourite character out of the original series is Lieutenant, which is basically Commander Spock. I do like Spock. He's fascinating. He's Falcon. Well, he's half Falcon, half human. Basically, his dad Sirik is a Falcon, where his mother is human. Now, Spock, believe it or not, is the longest character that has appeared in Star Trek history a lot. Played by Leonard Nimoy, not the one from the Kelvin universe, um, Sacred Crito. Or Ethan Parks from the Discovery. I'm actually talking about Leonard Nimoy. Now, Leonard Nimoy played Spock in the original series, the six Star Trek films, coming back in 2009 and 13 to do Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. And he also appeared in Star Trek, the next generation episode, Unification, when he tries to ally the Vulcans and the Romulans. Now, Spock, I'd say, he's absolutely my favourite character because, one, he sacrifices himself in Star Trek II, the Rafa Khan, and he gets brought back to life, which is a really great way because uh, Kirk fires his torpedo with him in it in the Genesis planet. And it brings him back to life that way. And he has to go to Vulcan to get his memories out of Leonard McCoy and put into Spock's body. 
Now, I absolutely do like this character. I like the way he goes in Star Trek VI, where Kirk goes, where he's literally telling Kirk, saying, Jim, they're dying. And, he goes, and Kirk goes, let them die. When he's trying to stick up for the Klingons, which is another good Star Trek movie about that. So, jumping into The Next Generation, my favourite character out of The Next Generation is Captain Picard. I believe he's one that has suffered a lot in his run of Star Trek in the films and, of course, in the TV series. So, of course, this will tie up with Star Trek Picard because he's my favourite character in both. He's Patrick Stewart. It's amazing. Now, Picard, I do feel sorry for him because once he was a very awesome Starfleet officer. He took on three Norse guns, got stabbed in the heart, so he had to replicate a heart put in. And then he got assimilated by the Borg in in the year of 2366 to 2377, because it's around about a new year point in that time. He gets assimilated by the Borg, turned into Locutus of Borg, used for the Federation's mass destruction, gets turned back into human, and then later on, during his run, he ends up getting captured by the Cardassians, tortured, and trying to get him to say, there are five lights. And Picard just goes, there are four lights. And then, of course, he still suffers when in Nemesis when he's trying to battle his evil clone, Shinzon. He loses Lieutenant Commander Data, which is my second favourite character out of Star Trek Extraction Run. And I absolutely feel Picard, because even though he misses Data, Star Trek Picard's done absolutely brilliant. I love season one of Star Trek Picard. I like the fact they brought Data back in like a dream state at the beginning with the Enterprise D. I absolutely do love this um, TV series, Star Trek Picard. And he even dies at the end of the season and then he gets put into an android body and the end, which I think is actually quite good. Picard gets another life in a way and it's absolutely brilliant and that's why I love it. So, Star Trek Deep Space Nine now. So, my favourite character from Deep Space Nine has to be, I have to say this, Jatsia Dax because she is awesome. She's a trill. Literally, with the slug worm put into her body that used to be part of Curzon Dax, Jatsia Dax ends up mating with Worf, breaking a few bones while they mate like they're doing Klingon. She can use a bat left, she can kick ass, and she's so brainy. She's absolutely, absolutely amazing and gorgeous. And such a shame she left after season six. I wish Terry, Terry Gate would have, Terry Fallow, something like that, Terry would have stayed for season seven. But a contract ended with season six. So, yeah. But she was absolutely brainy and beautiful. Voyager now. My favourite character out of Voyager has to be Serenine. Because I do like the way she has become. And even though she does appear in Star Trek Picard as well. She does grow a lot over Voyager's four seasons of Voyager she's in. Because she literally joined the crew in season one. season In season four of episode one of Voyager. And she's in it all the way to the end. When the crew made it back to the Alpha Quadrant. And then she becomes... Very hard to complicate. She ends up having a relationship with Jakote, and then she has a relationship with Raffi in Star Trek Picard at the end of season one. So I'm quite looking forward to see how she's going to be in Star Trek Picard season two. I'm really looking forward to seeing Star Trek Picard season two. I cannot say that it has such return of the main f favorite villains about Enterprise. How is she? Because she's the lieutenant. She's like the ham, and especially in season three, she does suffer a lot, even after when she's like being captured. By the reptilians to try and get hold of the like the devices to activate the weapon to destroy Earth, which is the crew of the NXO one have to go and stop. Now, Star Trek Discovery, I have to say, I have really have to say this. Um, Cadet Tilly is absolutely one of my favorite characters in that series because I think she's funny in certain aspects when she like does things and the way she's actually brainy and she's still a cadet. Doesn't really mind me. I don't think she's a cadet in season two and three. I think she does get promoted to like a lieutenant or something. But in when she first joins the ship, she's actually a lieutenant, uh, like a cadet in a way. But I find her, I used to find her really, really boring and stuff. But then season two and three, I think she's progressed more as a character, especially when she was left in command of Discovery by Michael Burnham. And she has to try and get the ship back. I think that was a good move for her as well. Star Trek Picard, I have already said this, Captain Bac P Patrick Stewart is my favourite character all time. But I have to say, Hugh is my favourite because Hugh comes back in. Now, Hugh is an ex-Borg that we encounter in the next generation. So they actually have the original actor back to play him. And he, he gets killed by the Romulus sister, which is a bit harsh. But 
I absolutely do like Hugh. I think he's good in the way he's good as a Borg. And then when he tries to help Picard get through the Tormata, the Torma that he when he lands back on the Borg cube and you see everything that he's suffered through with the next gen. And of course, Star Trek the first contact, I have to say. Then of course lower decks. Uh, do I have to say this? I can't um the what Boiler, that's it. Boiler has to be my favourite character, even though he does seem like a bit of a wasp like in the latest episodes where he's on the Titan and he's there got to fight these bunch of people and he's there screaming in the middle of a teleportation and then he ends up getting cloned. And the original copy of Boiler ends up getting kicked off the Tarite Titan back onto the Cita uh Soretos. Yeah, I feel sorry. I feel, do really feel bad for Boiler, but it is an absolutely iconic Star Trek show. That one is as well. He's a good character. I actually love the bit with Tom Paris where he comes out. He goes, "Tom Paris on the plane." And Tom Paris goes, "Kazan." <laughs> now talking about my favorite villains out of all of Trek history, I have to say there have been so many good villains out there, like General Chang in Star Trek: The Undiscovered Country. Khan in Space Seed, the Rafa Khan, and of course Into Darkness. The Borg are my all time favourite villains, like, like appearing in Next Generation DS, a little bit of Deep Space Nine at the beginning where the show Picard assimilating people and using the Borg, like the Borg using Picard to destroy the Federation fleet. That, like, that little bit. And then, of course, they appeared in First Contact. And then Voyager, which is another good TV show I love mine. I thought I love Voyager. I'm in the middle of watching season three. I'm on Future's End part two now, and I'm absolutely loving it. I do season one I used to find boring of Voyager and season two has grown a bit. Now season three is one of my favourite seasons of Star Trek Voyager from what I've watched so far. I absolutely love season three. As well as that, we also have the Cardassians, which are in the next generation of Deep Space Nine run and a little bit of a cameo in Star Trek Voyager when they're chasing after the Marquis. Now, I do like the, the Dominion, like the Gem Hadar. I think they're good fighters. And the fact that they try and hit Worf so many times in Worf in their prison camp and Worf's just there smacking them every time. <laughs> it's funny the way they're trying to get Worf to stand down and Worf goes, No, I won't ask. I am a Klingon. I absolutely do like... The Gemma Dar, I think they're a good villain. Uh, the Herosian, again, I think they're an interesting villain as well. Hunting their prey. Especially when they made the prey out of holodecks at one point. Which was quite good until Voyager had to interfere. And then, of course, Species 8472. Again, I think I like the little war with the Borg through um, Floric, Floretic Space. Where Voyager has to open the rift to go to it. Where they find out it was the Borg that started the war with Species 8472. Um, I also have to say other things about this, but that's other things. But if I was going to talk about my favourite starships now, because I've got so many favourite starships of mine that we have seen in Trek history, I have to say, I'm going to say my top three for now, because I will be doing a video of um, how I rank all of these starships. So in my fav favourite starship, I have to say, is the Galaxy Class Starship, the USS Enterprise Day. I absolutely love the next generation and I love the Enterprise Day. It is incredible the way you have that massively in like move down to the Enterprise D in the pilot episode of Encounters at Farpoint, which is another good episode of the next generation. I absolutely love the Enterprise D. It's one of my all time favourite starships. My second favourite has to be the Intrepid Class USS Voyager NCC 74656. I absolutely love this class. Now, Voyager never used to be one of my favourite starships, I did have to say. But since the nacelles like, move up and go into a higher warp faster than the Enterprise D, I absolutely do love that. That's a good point for Voyager X. They want to go into warp. Oh, just move the nacelles up and then it goes back into warp. My third favourite has to be the Defiant class, which is really good, another good class of starship. And this was used in Deep Space Nine. From season 3 to 7. And I absolutely do love it. Even though the fight did appear in first contact. Now I'm going to say this one as an honourable mention. My fourth favourite has got to be the Sovereign class. The USS Enterprise. -E. Now this one was designed to battle the Borg alongside with the fight. And the Enterprise -E is absolutely beautiful. It's a lot bigger than the Galaxy class. It's a lot um, sleeker. Because instead of the Galaxy class being like big like so oval shape and then live a little bit of a neck body and then the cells this one you've got no neck to the was the source section it's literally the source section 
crippled on like that and then folded out with the big long nacelles. And I absolutely do love the way the Enterprise E looks in First Contact, Insurrection and Nemesis. I hope the Enterprise E does return at some point in Star Trek Picard. I'd like to see Captain Worf. So that's my four favourite starships. Now, for an honourable mention, I do have to say the USS Discovery. I love the design to this. It doesn't look so very Starfleet-ish. It looks like they took a bit out of a Klingon ship and just wrapped around a bit of Starfleet stuff around it. But it absolutely works, especially with the spore drive when it jumps. I do like that. That's probably later on, further down in the list and not so many others. So that's probably my top four, I have to say. Now, for Star Trek shows, I've already ranked them, same with the Star Trek movies. I have to say there are some other gloves, but if I'm going to talk about Star Trek battles, we have so many good battles. We have the Battle of the Mataran Nebula, which is in Star Trek II, the Rafa Khan, with the Enterprise versus the USS Reliant. That's been took over by Khan. I absolutely love the Battle of Star of um, Kitima in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country where Kirk's end up having to battle against a cloak Klingon ship and it's actually whopping their asses really, really badly. The Battle of War 359 that we see in Deep Space Nine and a little bit of the next generation where we come across these old damaged starships. I have to say, I absolutely love this battle. So many ships blow up in this and 39 starships out of 40 do end up getting destroyed. One ship does managed to survive and i have to say that's a good a magnificent battle then of course battle of sector 001 that we see in first contact is again an absolutely great battle starfleet solution until the enterprise e comes in and captain picard helps out also for voyager in the delta quadrant they have so many good battles i like the year of hell parts one and two now before I talk about them, I, don't, I can't remember what actually the battle's called. So if I'm going to talk about my favourite episodes from each Star Trek show, you're going to be needing the big long list because I'm going to talk about my three favourite episodes out of the Star Trek TV show so far. So for the original series, I have to say Space Seed, the one where they have to go to Sessus Free to defeat the Gorn, and then the one from Season 3 where they have to do the Enterprise, called the Enterprise Innocence. They are my three favourite ones from the original series, from the animated series. There's only one, and it's the one with the Tribbles, with Silver Jones coming in with that device to eat the Tribbles. Again, that's another good episode. I do enjoy that one a lot. Next Generation, I have to say, Best of Both Worlds, Redemption, um, Redemption Parts 1 and 2, where you have Worf going back to the Klingons and the Federation interfering in, in the Klingon Civil War, which is another good um episode really for another that's a two-parter and for the third part all good things because that is a good finale for the next generation and i have rewatched that one recently because i don't understand the trailer where it says the trial never ended because i actually thought the trial did end at the end of next generation but he says the trial will still be going on at the end when he leaves captain picard so i have to rewatch that so i'd like to say thank you to my uncle tim for saying that to me when i last saw him because he did say that to me and i was like are you sure uh, Deep Space Nine, my favourite episodes of Deep Space Nine. No, it's What You Leave Behind, which is the final episode of Deep Space Nine. That's one of my favourites. Also, you have the two-part story where they have to retake Deep Space Nine. I'm going to go by two parts as well. I absolutely love the two-part. I can't remember the actual funny episodes, but I love the way you got the Federation fleet being kind of like outnumbered and then the Klingons come and kick Cardassians and the Jemadar's asses. And my third favourite episode of Deep Space Nine has to be The Search, where Odo goes and encounters the Founders for the first time after the Defiant is actually took over by the Dominion and you got Cisco there fighting them off, which is another good point in another Star Trek episode. I do enjoy that one. And Star Trek Voyager, if I was to say my three favourite episodes of Star Trek Voyager, Endgame would have to be one because I like the way Voyager... It's very different, I have to say, with the future version of Janeway coming back in time to get Voyager home in time, but for, get Voyager back seven years, like seven years later after they left and start having to stay there, 75 years. I have to say that's one of my favourite because it has, does have the Borg in it. And you see uh, Voyager's armor torpedoes and transphasic, sorry, the armor plating and the transphasic torpedoes. Uh, my second favourite episode of Voyager, I have to say, is Year of Hell Parts 1 and 2. So I absolutely do like that two-parter. I think it's absolutely good. And the way Janeway sacrifices her life <laughs> at the end. So it all restarts at, to, the, to the very beginning of it. I absolutely love that. Where she literally collides Forge into the time ship. And it sets resets everything. That's kind of a good episode. And my third favourite has to be Scorpion Parts 1 and 2. 
because this is the Borg, the Borg War. The Borg are in a war with species 8472, and it is incredible. The Enterprise, now, my favourite Enterprise episodes, I have to say, is mostly is season four. I mean, like, my favourite one has definitely got to be the three-part story with Nunyan Song's great, 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 great grandfather, in a way, where he's got the augments and... He's literally got them and then stole the Klingon ship. I think that's a quite a good one. So that would be my first favourite. Second favourite is the one to last one. Because these are the voyages. Well, yeah, these are the voyages. It's a terrible last episode. It should have really ended with the one before this. When you see Trip and T'Pol lose their child. I do have to say that one. And my third favourite, I have to say, is most probably the Expanse. When you see the Enterprise take on Joras's ships i do love that star trek discovery i have to say mostly of season two i absolutely love season two I, it's the, uh, for me it's the best discovery season out there after season three's after and season one is last so hopefully season four comes out and takes over season three because i weren't too keen on season three i don't really yeah i don't really like that the way there's like set it i don't like the way they've done it with the future but hopefully everything gets back to normal in season four i'm quite happy to say that yeah i'm looking forward to that star trek Picard. i have to say three me three episode, uh, favorite episodes again this is a hard one i absolutely love picard so i'm gonna cheat and say all 10 episodes are absolutely amazing because i love star trek picard but my specifically my all-time favorite is when you see picard's going to get um so sojin and he ends up having to go, to go to an old abandoned Borg cube in the middle of Roman space. And it's his first time he's actually back on a Borg cube since the best of both worlds. Lower Decks, I have to say, probably the last episode of season one, because I do love it. I love those when people go, oh, no, not another Enterprise. And then you have Riker on the Titan, and then you get that Star Trek Enterprise. He goes, hello, I was on the holodeck with Archer and the Queen, you know, the crew of the NXO one Enterprise. It took a long road to get from there to here. And I love them. And you got him doing the jazzing. I do love them as well. They're my favourite episodes of the Star Trek TV series so far. I am looking forward to Strange New Worlds, to be honest with you. Because I'm really looking forward to Strange New Worlds. I think Strange New Worlds is going to be absolutely amazing. Because what I've read, they're supposed to be going back to the old style of episodes. Like in the next gen, original series and Star Trek Voyager. I'm really looking forward to that as well. So... Happy 55 years of Star Trek. You've left me with so many good things to say. My favourite characters, my favourite battles, my favourite TV show ep of episodes. Let me know in the comments what is your favourite Star Trek TV show. What's your favourite Star Trek movie? Who's your favourite Star Trek character? What's your favourite Star Trek battle? And of course, what is your favourite starship? Is it the Sovereign class? Is it the Galaxy class? Is it the Intrepid class? Now, if my best mate Jamie Alfred is watching this, I know for a fact he's going to say the Intrepid is his favourite because of the USS Voyager. Because he absolutely loves Star Trek Voyager. So, Jamie, there you go. You've got a big shout out there for your love for Star Trek Voyager. So, thank you for watching this video. Please do like, subscribe and share and join me on another channel. And please remind you to stay on red alert in case of any Klingon attacks. Thank you for watching and have a great day.